Boom, it's episode 64. Let's try this again. And we got uh, a dear friend, filmmaker, now producer too. What? Stand-up comic. Oh my God, who what? is that? <laughs> Vanessa Vasquez is in the house. What's up, Vanessa? Hey, what's up? What is, is that going me on? over there? That what That's you. Oh That's your God. Oh, we got an official. We got an official setup here. What's going on with you, man? I've been waiting to get you on. I know. For a minute. I wasn't gonna come on. I was mad. I was like, well, I don't know. I got things to do. I'm busy now. I have, I have laundry. <laughs> Shit. Adulting, man. I just saw you do a set before we even get into anything. I just saw you do a set at the Laugh Factory in Hollywood, mm-hmm. and I'm fuck every time. I'm blown away. I'm like, damn, like. You're like I'm like yo Vanessa's like a legit comedian. Like, <laughs> it's kind of crazy. No, it does. It feels like I'm a legit comedian when I when I go to these big places, and it's yeah. kind of crazy that I'm there because, as a comic, like it takes a while to get to those cl- clubs. One hundred percent. So to be there, I'm so grateful. So I'm like I can't mess this up. Yeah. You know I can't fuck it up. Like I gotta do. Good. <laughs> I gotta make us look good out here. I just like pr- I'm like praying right before I go. I'm like God, please call the funny angels to somehow illuminate me. <laughs> Dear Lord, baby Jesus, Dear please Lord, help me be baby funny Jesus tonight. And baby funny angels, come on. What does your family say out like in Houston and stuff? Or well, like, even all your friends out there and shit? They ha- a lot of them haven't seen me live, but uh, they're like always like, send us videos, send yeah. us links. And they're like, are you talking about us? Yeah. <laughs> like, but I yeah. feel like it's been in your nature anyway. Like it's always been in your nature to kind of be silly. You know what I mean? Like yeah. At least since I've known you, you've always kind of had that. So it totally, that's why it's kind of a trip because it, it, you, your, your sense of humor has always been there. It's always been like intact. But it's like it's different to see it when somebody's like, all right, let me use a sense of humor and like really craft and act together and like structure jokes and have like punchlines and shit. Right. So it like totally makes sense because it feels genuine. But I'm like, damn, look at Vanessa. Look at her. <laughs> She's fucking You know, funny. I always wanted to do that. And then sometimes I would write stuff and mm. there would be times that I was on set like on East Los High and yeah, I would yeah. write things. And there was a guy, I get Ricky Signs. Oh yeah, uh, I know. yeah. He played one of the. He crashed my car, by the way. That motherfucker. In real life. <laughs> yeah, in real life. Oh my god. We were, we were out one night. Well, I went one time to an open. <laughs> Wasn't mic. his fault. Sorry. Should you... we talk about this? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so you went one time to what? Should I? No. Uh, so I went with him to an open mic once. He was doing it, or you, or what? He was. Ah. And I had some stuff that I had written down, but I was like. Should I go up there? I was like, no, I'm gonna feel so stupid. Like, I don't know what the hell to say. And what, are, you know, I just, I couldn't do it. And so. So you didn't go up. You, bl- you flicked out. No, I just didn't. I was there to support him, really. Yeah. Um, but I just always admired people. Like, you know, the fact that you can go up there, tell a story, make people laugh, and inspire people at the same time. Yeah. It was. It's awesome. I feel like I feel like you're kind of like, almost like hijacking people's brains for a second. <laughs> like you know what i mean like when you're up there you're kind of like hey guys like check it out here's my perspective like jump in the back seat of my car i'm gonna take you for a drive and then you kind of lay out like what your world is like and you describe it and then you fucking you're like this is why it's funny and they're like oh shit that is funny you know what i mean like because i see it like i see all the parallels the shit you're talking about on stage is like real shit right it's happening in your life it's just right. like, a funny perspective no yeah 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 and it's the same thing. Like, when I'm out there, I feel like I'm talking to my friends. Yeah. You know, we're all hanging out, kicking That's it. That's what I'm impressed by, your, yeah. your comfort level up there. Well, I, I've been doing theater, That's too, true. for a while. And then yeah. also public speaking. But so still, I think even that, that is different, but still. It is different, but at the same time, it helps. Yeah, You know, because sure. that, uh, just going up on stage, people get so scared, you yeah. know, and talking to people. like, yeah. And as actors, it's okay to do it because... Um, when you do a play, you're not looking at the at the audience, yeah. but with comedy, your stand up com you're 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 right there in your face with these yeah. people, and they're looking at you like, and you know the, I think the toughest crowd is the Latino crowd because they'll call you on your shit. They call you on your <laughs> shit. I tell them, I tell people I was like stupid. I, I, had, I had a show uh, that I did. Um, at Brea Improv and I was shitting bricks I kid you not I was like oh my god I was like these are all my people like they're gonna call me out there but they're gonna look at me and be like that bitch is lying yeah. cause they <laughs> can like, smell bullshit they smell no bullshit I'm like no but it was good uh, I just had fun you know a lot of times I, I, I you know think of stuff right on the spot yeah, and, yeah it feels yeah. that way it feels like you know it's funny because like, in comedy there's no room for bullshit like you could be on theater if you're being a shitty actor you can't really fucking tell right because you just, <laughs> I mean, you, I mean, you, the, the audience can tell, not, the yeah, audience the audience, but I'm saying if you're like, as the actor, right, if you're doing a, a play, it's not like, you're not getting, me- you're, you're, as a comedian, you're, you're, you're 
as the the work is 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 very black and white. It's either you're funny or you're not, and you're getting immediate response. Yeah. As opposed to if you you're an actor, be, you have to be very present. That's like, what I'm saying. Super like super present. If you're not getting laughs, right. you know you're bombing. You know, as opposed to an actor, like if they're just doing well, a play, you don't know you're doing horribly. Right. And as you're bombing, you get in your own head and you start to like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, right, yeah. That's why, that's why I, I respect it so much when I see comedians. I'm like, damn, like, that's a lot of balls. Because if you fuck up, you better learn how to fix it, you know? You, you just keep going. Yeah. I mean, some jokes people are going to laugh. Sometimes they don't. Depends on your audience, too. Yeah. And you just keep going. You know yeah. that you're going to, you have some tricks up your sleeve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so weird to say that. Yeah. Yeah. But, But you're still like you've been you've been working and shit. We we met on the on the set of East Los High, right? Like that was no, we didn't meet on there. We knew we knew we knew each other before that. Right. Yeah. We had the same manager. We did. Yeah, that's kind of funny. It's been years. <laughs> I know we were like, the only ones that knew each other before. That's right? true, huh? Uh, well, not some people knew each other. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, but I remember when we we went out to celebrate the same night. We were having dinner with mm. like our, our reps and stuff, that's and I was right. like, "Oh, you booked this too?" And she's like, "Yeah, you booked this." Yeah. It's just kind of crazy because I feel like. That show, I always say, is going to be like the freaks and geeks of Latinos in media. You know what I mean? Because like right. everybody's kind of going off and doing their own different thing. Different stuff. And everybody's on different shows and just kind of like still working. But it's like right. it was such a it was such a, a, a talent rich pool of, right. of people. Oh yeah, that everyone went on, on on set was super talented. Yeah, it was a cool little project to be. Yeah, you know, to be a it part was so of. amazing. You know, yeah. I feel like. There was times where we didn't even want to get off set. We yeah. were like, man, it's time to go home. We don't want to go home. And you'd be there for a long time right. sometimes, you know, but you're just having a blast we're with people. We're just having fun. Yeah. And then even when we still hang out, you yeah. know, we all have like this family connection. Yeah. We're just like, yo, that's yeah. my ELH peeps. You it's know what I mean? It's very strange, right? Because I've worked on a bunch of different shit, but yeah. none of it's like that. You no, know? I've never seen it, anything like it either. I still don't. I And to have that connection is really yeah. Because we did something, you yeah. know, we did something that had never been done before. Yeah, and that was beautiful. So it was like, if y'all ain't inspired yet, if y'all ain't like, inspired, you look yet, back and you're like, we did that shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's kind of tight. It doesn't matter what people said, what people, how much they yeah. paid it. That was yeah, like, for real. How that, much they owe. It was like, no, it was beautiful. You know, it's like that's what you were there for. It's artists. You you you, you know we we have that um. What is it that craving to do to projects pour. like that? Yeah, yeah. And of course, you're hungry for those. You right, look for those. You do. Yeah. And to have that, it was like an honor. Yeah, you were there for a few seasons. Right? You did three seasons, or two seasons? Uh, two, three, four, four years. Four years of work. Damn, that's a big chunk of your four life. Years. You know what right. I mean? like, <laughs> Tell yeah. me about it. Yeah. Like, what am I gonna do next? <laughs> it's kind of crazy because, like, as an you know, I'm like I spent that much time. Over people that. always say, as an actor, like. What you say is is my last job was my last job, you know. Until something else pops up, it's just boom, boom. Like you, that's kind of how you live as an right. as, as an in, as a performer, as because you know you you just did a pilot too recently, no? Right. Yeah. And yeah, like for ABC. Yeah, and, and and so what happened there? It didn't get picked up. And that's what's crazy about this industry, like right. you never you never know when you like, don't. And we kept feeling like it was yeah we're gonna go we're gonna go, but then it didn't, you know. And but it was either way it was cool because of it was experience. my first project like right out of East Los High. And what what you do you're pretty much on hold from like February to Just May. Anxious as fuck. Right, <laughs> you're pretty much auditioning the whole time. Yeah, because. While you're going through the audition process, you're testing for the show. Mm -hmm. Then when everyone's on set creating the pilot, like they have to pull in the best of their best, yeah. right? And then because it's, it's being you got no time, Boom. right? No, and then the pilot's being tested with everyone, and you're still waiting. So it's kind of like you're still auditioning, yeah. right? The the show's being auditioned. So it was a neat ex a neat experience to go through, and um. I'm I'm happy. Yeah, I was sad. I think, but it was more my ego. Yeah, you know, it was like, oh my god, did I, I do something bad? <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> like, there's so me? many moving parts though. That right, you, it's like it has nothing to do with you. No. you know, it has. I, was, I mean, yeah, of course. But yeah, yeah, you, if you, they picked you already after that whole audition process, you're there for a reason. Yeah, you know. So um, and not only that, it also it also lets you know, like, you know, it's it's hard not to get caught up, like, and be like, you know, measuring how good you are, right? Right. Because in our industry, it's like <laughs> either you're working you or you're not. It, it's and you can't really you because can't do that. because you, but you still get caught up in it. But it's good to have these. It's, right. good, it's good to have these experiences that kind of like give you like like yo, you're doing great. Like you're right. you're right where you need to be. The work's where it needs to be. 
It's just shit that's out of your control. It's shit that you're never going to be, you know, but it's not, it's there for something to teach you something. And it's also like making sure you have a really good team behind you. The people you hang around with too. 100%. Like I, I spend a lot of time like by myself, you know, Same. and I think, yeah, yeah, I think we, we talked about this is that because you constantly need to, you know, recharge yourself after yeah. every audition. It's a, um, I, I can't, yeah, I can't explain it, but you know, you just have to reset. Yeah. And, um, when you're around people and then you're resetting, I said, for, I used to live in a house with like a bunch of um, artists and then sometimes people would come in and they'll say, oh, well, oh God, I went to this audition and it just sucks, blah, blah, blah. And you're just in the middle about resetting, yeah. right? And then you start to feel shit. You start thinking about your own stuff yeah. and it's like, oh, bro, I can't. Like, yeah. I want to be there for you. But like, I just spent the past two days trying to <laughs> get You can't my- jeopardize it. You can't jump right, in the way and catch right. that bullet so, from you know yeah a lot of it is like it's, it's also because like you're an empathetic being right so you, you right. when when people tell you these things you, it takes a piece of you and you feel for them and it kind of throws off your little vortex that you're trying to create right you know because you're you, like Ugh. and then also too sometimes people are afraid of success because they don't know how it's going to make people around them feel yep. so it's hard for you to be bold to mm-hmm. um be who you need to be because mm-hmm. sometimes we dumb ourselves down or we dim our light to make other people 100%. feel comfortable because but, they're because they don't know how to accept it because right. they're so scared of, of looking well, out or if, whatever like we all have different journeys and yeah. at some point and we're all going to be going like this right climbing and if one person's here and then one other person's down there like it, it kind of affects yeah um kind of affects people so. it does it does but it's also like you're here and there but there's 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 you know the there's there's journeys that you take on every different aspect of your life right you know like some years somebody might be killing it on their career but they're not doing their own spiritual work and you might be doing your spiritual work but you're not necessarily doing good in your you know your finances or whatever and then the next year vice versa like right we can all be improving at different levels at different speeds and you can't right. you know it's hard right. you can't really compare yourself to people right because then that's when you start to shoot yourself in the foot um but like i always have my mom and my manager's really great too he's always like Mamita, si eso no para ti, no problema. Cuban, <laughs> no, he's Puerto Rican. Does oh, that sound Cuban? One of them, too. I know it was one of them. One of them. Tú no te preocupes, mami. <laughs> uh, no, I love him. He's great. And uh, my team, you see my agents, you know, they're always really so supportive and always calling me, letting me know everything that's going on. Um, I but think- I, I always call my mom. My mom is the person that... She was just in town. She, she was in town. She, she went to the show. She left? She, oh, she already she left? She left, yeah. 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 She was having a ball. Yeah, she was. She felt all special. Did you see her? Yeah. She got up and she was like, "Hi, this is mom." Because <laughs> you're because you're talking about it in the act. Like, that's my mom right there. She's Everybody, the shout out to my mom. She's like, "Yeah." <laughs> Everybody's clapping. Nick Lachey was there clapping. At oh your my mom. god, Nick Lachey was there <laughs> right before I went on. So random, man. Right before I went on set, I like there's this there's, there's this a folding table. There. Yeah, there was a bunch of there was a table, and then I like. I'm fixing myself and I look to the side. I was like, oh my God. And I told the other <laughs> is that girl, I was like, degrees? is that, it's 98 <laughs> degrees in here. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was like, hey, uh, is that Nick Lachey? She was like, yeah. And I was like, oh my God, how do I look? <laughs> <laughs> that was, you know, that was another thing that was crazy. All the comics were all women. Everybody was slamming. I was like, damn, all hot chicks, all of them funny. Nobody really did bad. And I was just like, damn, like this is kind of crazy. That cool little organization she has called uh, Pretty Funny Pretty Funny Women, no? Pretty Funny Women. Women, yeah. Win Winnem, win him, win him, win him. Win him. Funny winning. <laughs> yeah. Women. <laughs> which which uh, camera are you going to use? <laughs> all of them. I use all of them. Okay. That one's your camera. See, that's your frame. That's my frame. And that's both of them. That's, the, that's what we call the master shot. This is your single. I know that's what your that's other called. Single. <laughs> <laughs> I know what it's called. I work in this industry. Uh, that, but that was that was kind of crazy too. Yeah, uh, you know, watching your mom be happy and shit. Yeah, was she like, had a ball. She yeah. was like, she called me yesterday. She's like, oh my God, everybody at work was seeing my Snapchat. <laughs> and they're like, oh my God, you look like you had an amazing time. I was like, mom. They did. You were snapping the whole time. You have Snapchat? <laughs> you have Snapchat? She's That's like, kind of yeah. crazy, right? You, I feel like you, as, as you get along in this journey, you kind of start to feel like more like the parent sometimes. Right. With your parent, you know what I mean? And you start well, like. Well, when I was growing up, you know, my, I was kind of because she was, my mom was a single mom, mm-hmm. you know, for 10 years. And so when I was younger, we'd go places. She was wild, you know. Yeah. She was like me when I was on the yeah. shop. Yeah. <laughs> I calm down now. It's Camila Tequila. Uh, she was like Camila Tequila. Yeah. But, my mom's uh, crazy too. She, yeah, she was really wild and like, 
She's, she, she used to drive this Bronco, right? And she'd be like, Those, every time she made a turn, she'd be like, I got to do that. It sounds like, like my mom. This is kind of crazy. she'd just do like this crazy turn and be like, oh my God, mom, stop. <laughs> Don't drive like that. And then we'd go places and she was like, muy coqueta. And like guys would stare at her and I'd just be like in the back, like mean the dog. bitter like, little daughter. Like, yeah, in the no, back. Like, I was just like, mom, don't look her. at my mom. Yeah. And then I'd like throw the middle finger at them just to like scare them. Like, oh my God, I don't want to go near her. Like, <laughs> she has a crazy daughter. Yeah. <laughs> I got to deal with this little shit. Right, yeah. exactly. That was that's what I was doing. I was protecting her. But now, and then I went through my period where you know, where she was having to take care of me, but um yeah, going know. crazy those days. I don't know who's going to go crazy next. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. That's funny. That's where you get it from. That's right. I get it from my mom too. She's kind of crazy. You get it from like your mama. Say. Yeah. <laughs> um um but uh what else has been going on with you since like you did that. You did that pile a little while ago and stuff. And oh, mm-hmm. well, you were on. I mean, this is all pretty recent, I guess, right? What? All of this stuff has been going on. I feel like yeah. I feel like things happen so damn fast. That you feel like mm-hmm. it's been so long. I don't know. We all go into our own little square, our, our own little uh, what's it called, corners and stuff. It's right. weird. It's weird. Everybody's like on their own thing, but I like to like um, touch base with everybody. No, I, I've been producing. Um, oh, that's right. You produce too. too. Yeah, but. <laughs> hey. I well, I started actually in Houston. Hey. Hey, <laughs> producer. <laughs> uh, no, I love producing, um, and I was doing it in Houston. But the thing is, is that being a woman and being a producer, there's mostly male producers, right? Yeah. And it's already hard enough being a Latina, right? Yeah. So when I was out there, I didn't really feel like I got the credit I deserved. And I was always working with like male producers or directors. Yeah. And they were just like, um, yeah, sure. We'll do this or whatever. I'm like, bro, I'm trying to help you create your whole project. And yeah. I've done this. And like a lot of times they wouldn't give me credit. And I just got a little bit jaded. So whenever I came out here, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to focus on my acting. And when the time is right, I'll start producing again. You know, yeah. when I feel really passionate about something. And so, um, yeah, it's just kind of, it's been like that, you know. And um, let's just see where it goes. I saw you. You, you know? were working with Caden, no? Caden? Oh, yeah, yeah. Caden yeah. Phoenix, yeah. We, we're, we're doing a couple of, um, we're doing a couple of uh, short films. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a whole different avenue in itself, too, just sitting on the back. Also, I'm sure that helps you, too. Like, I'm sure you're bringing in friends and stuff, but. It helps you too when you get when you sit on that side that you see like how imperson how it's not like personal when they don't cast somebody or whatever you know what I mean they're just like well yeah oh. I mean most of the times it's like we see a role and then we immediately think oh this person would be great for it. we'll just we'll call them up and mm-hmm. if they can do it they can do it so it hasn't unless it's like a child or something uh-huh. but most of the time we're just using all our friends you yeah. know like if we say, that's the oh. beauty of having it we can use our friends and we can just right you know? and that's all i've been using you know i was just like oh i got a friend that looks just like that you know yeah. whatever you wrote so we'll call him up you know yeah we'll probably be calling you <laughs> i don't it. know what let's do it whatever creates whatever yeah. she creates and it's like oh that looks like rick <laughs> what's what's what, what <laughs> that what, sounds like rick mencia <laughs> You're like, hey, what are you doing? Hello, Rick. Oh, nothing. Just podcasting this over is, here. B- this is Vanessa, the producer. <laughs> oh, hello, Vanessa, the producer. We have this part for you. Not sure if you like it. Take a look at it. You know I, what? Have your people call my people and we'll get back to you. I, I, I don't want to go through your agent. You know, it's just kind of you and me one on one. You we're know gonna, how they do that? Pay you in when, they don't, when they don't want to yeah. call your agent, it's like. We'd just rather go through you and you're like. I just mm, rather go through you. It's like, suspect. Oh. Suspect. The suspect. Unless, if you don't know them, like, be very careful. I'm sure that's been fucked up for you too, right? Like having to deal with shit. Like, as you know, before before this whole Me Too movement thing kind of happened. Yeah. Like, it was kind of like it's so different now, man. It, it like it is and it isn't, right? It it's different because like even the way content is. Like, I'm I'm glad people are still speaking up for like Latino content that is you know representation in media and all that stuff. But it's also never been this fucking good. There's never been this many dope stories that are going to be told. And I think it goes hand in hand. And people are saying, it's like, oh, it's because, you know, our voices are being heard. And I don't think it's necessarily all of that. I think it's more that there's a different platform now. The internet kind of controls right. everything. Right. And Latinos are good storytellers. You know what I mean? And they're going to create good content. And people are going to find that content because it's right. good. Not necessarily because, you know, this production company or this, this producer allowed for this. It's more because... We have the ability now, kind of like you producing, to make our own shit. You know what I mean? We'll make our own shit. You know, that's why we're more represented. In the, a lot of these things are just online shit that's, that's starting up. I don't know. Um, right. um, like you, what? Like, 
I'm saying like all these shows that are oh, like okay, you know yeah, like, yeah. like like you like know the web, they have like the stage and 13s stuff. and then the mundo flicks and then you have these there's uh, a lot of platforms exactly yeah. you know you just, there's the crackles the amazons yeah you have to know what you're doing and it's about putting the right people together and telling a good story yeah you know there's a lot of people pitching out stories left and right but it's at, they also have their own people they ha they have to compete with yeah. you know so it's like you have to have a really compelling story and um something that's going to help that platform you know yeah. kind of like with hulu you know they were starting off and we we're yeah. coming on they're like well what do you got that's new and fresh and so east Coast high came about the and we were the latino long, show we were yeah. the longest running show for a while yeah until they decided to rebrand yeah. but <laughs> yeah for real and that's all the Anyways, politics um, of it you know yeah so, I mean, that's the thing, you know, you, you just, you got to do what you can with what's available and yeah. just be grateful with it and then move on. You know, if they feel like people, if people need to move on, then you need to move on too. And then yeah. it's like, what are we going to do next? What new wave are we going to jump on? And, and the, the key is also using what you got from, from that, that project. That right. You did, you knowing know what your I mean? experience, knowing your worth, knowing yeah. now like what you deserve and the you know? voice that it could create for you now you know what i mean like a right. lot of a lot of it is also like the platform and the voice and you have that and once people know of you right you know what i mean it's easier for you to catch on but even as a woman like as a latina i'm sure like also that's another that's another thing because i the you know the first after this whole story the story broke of of harvey weinstein and all this shit like i remember the first set i was on i was doing this commercial and and it was like the first time I heard it. It was like you know they have the safety meetings before we start filming and shit. Yeah. Well, this guy then you know they had the safety meeting regularly the fire marshal and then the producer comes up and starts talking about if you feel harassed and if because we had like strippers and shit or whatever the fuck it was, uh, some girls like in some clothing and they just like if you feel this if you feel that and I'm like damn like they're having this talk now, but it's like I look at it totally differently because I'm a dude right and I and I and I never think of like how it would be to be that woman on set and that's in that clothing like motherfuckers will get it twisted and just treat you with some type of way just because of the clothes you're wearing right. on set and and now they have to make that announcement that means that dudes don't already get that right they you know what don't. i mean so it's like so it's like hey we have to outline it now and right. tell you straight up don't do this shit if somebody does it to you you know come and talk to us I'm, i don't know have you have you experienced did you experience a lot of that even before this whole like um yeah, I mean, I've I've I was I've been on sets where, you know, either the director kind of felt like the way he was um, talking most like indie films, like when I was in Houston, yeah, right. But um, like it just felt a little what is it like gender biased, mm. you know, where like they I felt like they would talk to me or treat me differently compared to other actors. Um, but yeah, there was times where I also felt it from you know actors you know yeah. male actors that i worked with and then it was like bro like you have to set your boundaries and say hey you can't put your hand on my leg like that yeah um or you can't do this or you're getting too close to me like they said they said cut like why are you still all in my face you yeah. know what i mean um Damn, that's gonna be kind of creepy <laughs> yeah like, hey, or bro. it's like because then at the same like if you speak up you don't want to like, you don't want you don't want to be like hey like you know make this whole scene you're on yeah work Right. You, know, you don't you know, want to create, make it awkward either. Exactly. That's what because I'm you have this energy to create, mm -hmm. right? But you also know how, have to know when to, okay, um, enough's enough. Like, if I'm not giving you that vibe, yeah. you know what I mean? It's different. Then there's if, nothing for you to catch. It's different as two people are, are, are actually feeling each other. Yeah, yeah, you yeah know? totally. For whatever reason, they're feeling each other. I feel like some people other. don't have those antennas very programmed, very well calibrated. I think people have those antennas. I just think some people aren't using them. Uh, they just you just kind of push their <laughs> limits or whatever? Well, yeah. It's just like, let me see what I can get away with. Before, uh, when that's why Me Too started coming up. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, let's speak up. We have to let people know that um they can't be doing this stuff and at some point they have to become aware of how they treat other people even in myself yeah like i have to be careful how i treat guys yeah. too because yeah. i grew up around nothing but boys so i'm so used to like playing around with guys saying this or that joking around like guys would joke with me i would joke back yeah. but now i'm like okay i probably shouldn't say that yeah <laughs> you know because then it also opens be up a different avenue that could be offending them yeah you know because I, I was treating guys like the way they treat women you yeah. know i was that person now so you're continuing like, that, that like, come here same. bitch get yeah. over here <laughs> come here little bitch come here little bitch i'm and just like, like out. It's your boyfriend, and he's like, "Damn, oh Vanessa, my God. I, yeah, stop calling I, I me a bitch in like, front of my homies, man." 
She's like, well, you I'm get, sorry. Don't act if, like a bitch. Guys, if I get... ever did that, then now you know why. <laughs> okay, sorry, I grew up man. with nothing but boys. So. And you were being a bitch. And I grew up with... <laughs> And you were being a bitch. No, no, stop. <laughs> I, I'm learning. We're all learning. Like we're all learning. She's calling you a bitch because you were being a bitch. Stop. Like, <laughs> I'm just we're, we're all learning. We're evolving as no, human you're, you're beings, right. and, and and it's the same thing with the whole Black Lives Matter thing. Yeah. You know, movement. Like we we have to become aware of our privilege. You know, yeah. we have to understand that. Some people have different experiences mm-hmm. um, that than we do based on how um, they look. Whether you're a woman, whether you're a Latino male, you know, we're going to have uh, different experiences and we have to be careful. Mm-hmm. You know, we have to be careful how we talk and how we say and how it could affect people. And people, Some people may say like, oh my God, we're so, everyone's so sensitive nowadays. It's like, okay, everyone's so sensitive, but... These are real things. Yeah. These these things can hold people back from being who they're really meant to be. It's not just about being sensitive. Not everybody has this knowledge. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I, but I also think uh, this is. I think yeah yeah, the, I I get the the thing of people being sensitive, but I think it all comes down to intent, like how you meant for the person to feel when you said it. You know what I mean? Like right. if you say something that might like a word that might be offensive to somebody. You know, if you say like faggot or something and then you're like, but you're saying it in a way where you're telling them like, oh, this word, I don't like when people say faggot, but you're like, can you just not say it? it's like, okay, you know what I mean? Like if, if I don't, if I don't have the intent to offend you and you get offended and I still apologize and it still becomes a thing, then I get it. But if it's, but if it's a, <clears throat> but if it's a thing where, um, people are saying it to offend you, then I completely understand that right. too. Right. You know and if I mean? someone, exactly, like, I've been in situations where I've said certain things and then this one girl was like, oh my God, you're a racist. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm talking about, like, <laughs> I was like, talking about- Pump the so, brakes, bitch. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, I didn't mean it like that, you know? I was like, this is a real situation where mm. in this organization, they only allow African-Americans and yeah. in this situ- organization, they only allow Latinos. Yeah. So how is that racist when the organization's doing it? Yeah. You know, like that's what they're known for. And then I was being accused of being a racist, you know, blew it up, made a big deal about it, yeah. telling people. And I was like, are you kidding me? I was and like, that's the thing are you too, just that it becomes like, a, it, it comes out in, in society too. It becomes yeah, the, the fucking like, pointing game. That it's like, you're, you're this and you're that and you're yeah, this. Yeah, like I could sit here and I could have said so many things about that girl, but... And how I felt that she was being racist at times. Yeah. But when you see people react like that, you understand that. There's a reason for that. There's not just, not just is there a reason, but sometimes I honestly do feel like, let's say, for example, you did something, you said something to me that was offensive, Mm -hmm. right? And you said, hey, I didn't mean it like this. But if you look at it that way, this is the way the situation is. Mm -hmm. Then I'd be like. Okay, you're right. Fair Just enough. please don't say it again. Yeah. You know, and I let it go. I'm not going to go blab to everybody in the whole world and be like, well, Rick did this, Rick did that, Rick's like this. Like, yeah. that's attention. Like, yeah. that, mean, that means you need attention and that's you trying to put yourself, that's me trying to put myself above you and trying to belittle you. That's where and the ego you. comes in. Right. And that's it's like, okay, are we, are we learning together? Right? Or are we or, separating, are, are, are ourselves, we separating ourselves? Are we just going to be pointing yeah. and not not teaching each other how yeah. to grow together and understand? No, Which I, I feel like that's happened. That's happening a lot right now. You know, with everyone pointing the fingers. You go online, there's an article that pops up and everyone's like, I bet they were from the red state. Yeah. You know, you're uh, not being, and you're not being empathetic because you're being the same right. thing you're bitching about. Like, you, everyone's you're not just like looking for a reason to say yeah. red or blue. Yeah. Right? Yeah democrat or republican you know conservative or liberal it's like boom 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 no one is communicating to understand yeah and that's what i feel like we need we're, we need to get there you yeah. know what i mean i think people are listening with the intent to respond right as opposed to listening with the that's intent exactly of understanding you right. know what i mean people are just like okay let me get your shit out so i can just yell my shit in your face and, right. and it's going back and forth and none of it's being absorbed by the other person we're all speaking from pain of course you know we all have our own pain we all have our own experiences but none of us are going to learn to understand each other if we truly don't listen yeah and it's and 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 it all comes back to empathy 
and then and then this this country is like based on competition too yeah you know where a lot of the sports and everything is like no i'm not gonna back down if i back down i'm a, I'm a pussy yeah. you know what i mean i'm not you know punk yeah i'm not gonna do that and know? there's there's a healthy balance there America. <laughs> but yeah but we push it right that's kind of the nature right, of america right. we push everything to its boundaries and sometimes it needs to sometimes yeah. you need to let people know hey 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 this is the way it is yeah you know especially if it's affecting people you know with the whole deport with the kids you know yeah. being held at the border that was fucking me and, up and still fucking me up right and they're not understanding that that that's affecting people you yeah. think that it's helping america but it's doing more harm than good you're creating so, a million ms13 members right so exactly you know what i'm right. saying you're like the most violent motherfuckers you're suppressing them already so it's like you're creating massive trauma to a child who doesn't understand right. anything and about they're gonna these remember lines. that growing up yeah Right. Like think because, you know, there's I was I was at the gym and this girl comes up and and I'm sure she's a sweet girl. But she's like, you know, she's like, as a mother, I can't understand how they send these kids out there. You know, this is not. And I'm like, well, you've never lived in because she's you know, she does well. Right. She lives in a good environment. She makes good money. She's like, you know, so so I'm like, you've never lived in an environment where you sending off your child into the fucking wilderness to cross a border is a better right. option than them staying right. home. You know what I'm right. saying? I'm like, you, you don't understand it because you're not and being she, they empathetic. Say that, and they say that. They're like, I don't understand. I would never do that. Of course. You said it yourself. You don't understand. You're speaking from your perspective, not but, from their perspective. But people know that they don't understand. So it's like, okay, you know? That's what I'm saying. And it's just, it's just I don't know. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking because like... You know, those little kids, a lot of them come from El Salvador and Guatemala. That's my that's my country, you know what I mean? That's, these are my, like, these are, like, little possibilities that I could have been one of these little dudes, you know what right. I mean? So that's why it speaks to me. I'm just like, damn, like, it fucks me up. But what I'm also noticing is that, you know, that's that's what has continued this cycle, you know what I mean? And th this, this cycle is continued because of this this illusion of separation, you know, right. and, and thinking that what I do to you is not going to affect me. But everything is... You know, it's kind of it's kind of yin and yang in this motherfucker. Right. You know, you get everything that goes out comes back in somehow, in one way or other, shape right. or form. So I don't know. As a com as 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 a comic, that's why I think it's so dope that you're doing stand up because you're able to like insert these social commentary issues. You oh, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and kind of like <laughs> yeah, and you, you know, you talk a lot about shit about immigrant parents and shit. Yeah, and I do, man. That's another reason why I wanted to do it. You know, because I feel like. You know, since um, the Trump administration came on, one this huge thing that he was campaigning was that, um, you know, Mexicans are criminals, rapists, and this and that. And what you're doing is you're poisoning society, right? There's already these judgments, right? And then not only is it affecting um, Mexicans, but it people aren't going to say, oh, look, there's a Mexican. They're going to it's just any Latino. Yeah, any brown, any brown person that looks Mexican, they're going to associate you yeah. as a criminal rapist. And so if, you, if kids are growing up with that in the back of their head, you know, that is... That's a that's pushing us back. Yeah. Like literally in the system. Yeah. Right. So that's what I'm trying to get people. I try to get people to understand. It's like you don't understand. You're like seeds out oh, there. Oh, but he was just saying because it's true. There's people coming. Yeah, but there's criminals, rapists, and drug dealers in every culture and every, every race. race. Yeah. Why don't you talk about all of them? Yeah. Because what he was doing is that he was infecting society and poisoning our minds. Yeah. To he was with racism. With seeds. There are little seeds. There's seeds of racism. Yeah. And it's like, okay, we're going back even, another even 50 to these, years. These like, Latinos, you know, to then the little boys and shit themselves. Right. And the little kids are doing it. They're like, I don't like that Mexican. You see videos of them where, and then they, they're, wearing, they're wearing their Make America Great Again. It's like, it's you, all taught. You know? Like, we're not making America great again. We're separating America. And uh, but that's also, sad. This is what I think. This is what I think. I, I, I think that it, Trump is a good thing because I don't think... Of course. He's a change agent. Uh, yes. Yeah. Exactly. It's, he's a change it, it's, agent. It's, it's, it's exactly what Without we need. Without him, we wouldn't have all these women running, running no. for... Pre or not Alexandria. President, but, Alexandria. Uh, for what's elected her, offices. What's her face in uh, New York? Right. Uh, Ocasio? Sometimes you have to push people... Um, to the breaking point. To the breaking point. Yeah. And that's what it's been doing for women. I think it's great. Because, yeah, it has. Because I look back, I even I wrote it on my Instagram. They're like, in a way, like, I'm happy that Trump is there because now oh, really people were about thinking it, yeah. about it. You're like, exactly. oh, what? I'm going to have this person lead yeah. me? Like, I should have done, I should have voted. That's I should have said something. Like, I should be voting. Yeah. Like, this this guy saying this? Like, no, 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 no. I'm going to say something. Like, yeah. now it's affecting people. Yeah. As opposed to before, it's like, oh, the government's figured out. It was 
was so oh, over there. So over there, right? Yeah. It's like now it's like, oh, this is real. Homeboy was on reality TV. I was like, bro, they just took my cousin, and this is not. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm running for office. <laughs> <laughs> for real, it's kind of crazy. I'm running for president. Fuck okay. <laughs> it. It's a change agent. That's it's, that's a so great way a of putting it. Change agent, yeah. And you know, this is the thing, like with souls, right? Sometimes souls have everyone i feel like i'm real spiritual right mm -hmm. so i understand that we all have this journey we all have this mission that we have to and sometimes people's mission is to be a trump mm -hmm. right is to come and do this and that because without even knowing <laughs> yeah without sometimes i don't yeah, even think like, he, i don't think he planned to win i think no it was, i think he planned to win he knew what more, he was I doing think it was more of a grudge i don't think he I, I don't i think he was more trying to make a statement and then eventually as it got along it just it just kind of caught traction. I don't think I think that when he first started running, I don't think he was taking it serious. But maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. Maybe he knew exactly what the fuck he was doing. Who the fuck knows? I don't know. Nobody knows. But I definitely do feel that there is a, a, a plus thing. side. Yeah, and, and for I also sure. Think, I also think that things have never been this good. They are great right now, but we are exposed to a much larger sample pool now because we have the internet. Mm -hmm. See, I was I grew up in South Central and in the San Fernando Valley, so it's like. I grew up in the middle of this shit. I, I was watching, I would see, there was drive-bys, the murders, all that shit. That shit was all happening. Right. And now we get to hear more about it. Right. And for me, like for me, that's why when you were talking about earlier, like you don't, you know, feeling like outside of, 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 of I always felt like it's weird. I didn't realize that that wasn't normal. Like that kind of crazy shit because my, my parents came from a traumatic like environment too. Mm -hmm. So so me thinking I was thinking like you know drive bys and shit just kind of happen in neighborhoods like I was whatever. the same way. I, you know? I I grew up in the hood till I, I was like ten years old and then my mom moved and that's well, your my years stepdad. of programming. That's where you think the world yeah, works. I really did. And then like people would come you know sometimes they break in the house when we're sleeping in the middle of the night. I was like oh. Somebody's doing it again. Yeah. Coming in again, you know? My mom, like, it's funny. I have a story about normal. that. And you become cr tr sort of traumatized. It so is when a I trauma. moved to the, what I would call the, um, all white people, rich white people neighborhood, yeah. which they weren't even rich, you know? No. I, mean, I realized <laughs> when I got there, neighborhood. I was like, oh, we're poor still. <laughs> which is different <laughs> I thought we were poor. moving up in the world. Uh, that didn't happen. She's <laughs> like, you kind of are, though. <laughs> but kind of, yeah, yeah. because the break ins didn't happen as much yeah. anymore. Well, actually, they didn't happen at all. Yeah. We did live in a lot safer environment. Um, but you do like you realize that you're different and yeah. i didn't realize how different i was till just a few years ago me i was too. like oh my god so like being an actor and like right. figuring out like, like oh you mean to tell no me no one knows what this is like because i would tell stories and people would be like what the <laughs> fuck where did you grow up bro Right. And I'm like, LA, bro? Like, no, what like, you mean? the house that we, like, I still have nightmares of that house. No shit. I still do. I have vivid memories. I remember they tried to break into my house once. This is the story I was talking about. We had a skylight, and these motherfuckers were trying to come in through the skylight. They knew we had a skylight, and they were trying to break in. And my mom had a fucking corbo machete, like a big-ass mm -hmm. machete. And then she comes outside, like, because all of us were home. It was my mm -hmm. brothers and sister. So, like, that's when, like, you see, like, the deep, primal lioness come out like she right. was trying to kill these motherfuckers right my mom like, too she was um, swinging this court like she was like i mean these fucking blade if she would have hit one of them it would have it would have like it would have fucked them up right and these guys jumped the fence i remember they ran oh and my jumped god the fence, same thing and they never came back right. ever again right i remember we they would all like, sleep mm -mm. in this uh all the women would sleep in this um like this uh broom in the back right and we'd sleep with the fan on the window and everything and it'd just be like two beds and then there'd be like two or three women on each bed that was like the women's room right so we'd all just sleep there and then sometimes like the dudes would come in the little crackheads would try to break in because they uh. knew that room was further than everything else and they'd pull the thing out they'd try to come in the fan they would try to pull, they'd pull the fan out and then they would try to come you know they would be coming in the house and then you just see my mom like shoot up like get the fuck out Oh my god! And then you see the guys just like running. See, and those up. are the traumatizing and you times. See, you hear them running, and then they jump the fence, and it's like, and you just like up, like did they leave? Like you just wanted to. Then you realize you peed in the bed, yeah. like no, but not see peed in the bed. It's like oh, damn, man, I gotta change, I was mom. Scared. <laughs> 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 that's so fucking funny <laughs> but you don't realize that's what's straight up trauma like that's true you don't realize you're being fuck no i remember my mom would yell get on the fucking floor and right. she would run in the room and she would she would pull us off the fucking beds we're in a dead sleep right. you're a kid and you get yanked and you smack the floor and you hear fucking and i'm like hope oh, because the guy across the street used to sell drugs and they're shooting this motherfucker's house up all the goddamn time oh my God. and I, I have those vivid memories but i was like 
just thinking that's part of the world. Like that's just kind of a, it's like I'm watching a movie, right? You know? Like right. it's kind of how I look at my memories. They're kind of like movies, you know. Right. But I'm like, hey, that one's that might be a fucked up memory because I don't remember much from those times. Why do I remember these specific moments that are like super heavy moments? You know what I mean? Like because you don't remember. I'm sure you don't remember other much other shit. Other than motherfuckers trying to break in. No, like it it affects you. It does something to you, you know? It's a little imprint in your brain. Right, right. And as um, you grow up, it's like your job to like I almost, still don't trust anyone. Like for real. I live in my apartments now and I hear something <laughs> Yeah. What's that? Toby? Where's Toby? Yeah, little dog. Oh, my dog. He's good. Okay, yeah. good. Toby, did you hear that? Yeah. Toby just look at me like, I didn't hear anything. Go back yeah. to sleep. Yeah. Nala does the same thing. She'd be like, What is that? I'm like, bitch, what are you going to do? Or when they hear something and there's absolutely nothing there, it's yeah. like, Toby, you're freaking me out. Sit yeah, down. for real. I don't want to see any ghosts right now. Please, not today. We're going oh to go God. to sleep. I have to wake up early. I love dogs. How long you had Toby for? Uh, like a year and a half. It's fuck. This crazy. Yeah. They teach you. They teach you a different thing. You know, of life. it's because I don't have any family here. Yeah. So it took me a long time because that was probably been one of the hardest things of not having that that love yeah. close to you, like some love that you can trust. So, Especially time, um, spending time alone a lot, too. Yeah, you know and then you come home from auditions, you know, you're all fucked up in the head, and yeah. you're like, just four walls, you're like, I swear to God, I'm going to go crazy here, yeah. like, I need to do something about this, like, no, I'm kidding. Yeah, for real. <laughs> okay. yeah. No. Uh, I feel better. <laughs> I need a dog. Yeah. <laughs> Think about getting a dog. It's either uh, dog or crack, one of the two. <laughs> no, I don't do crack. Never a dog can help me. <laughs> No, but I, I just, I, I had been wanting to get a dog. I was like, you know what? Maybe I need some affection. Yeah. Um, I think it's more of like a thing to help you kind of like be present again. Yeah. You think about like the future so much or you th- they said like if you're anxious, you're thinking about the future. But if you're not, depressed, you're thinking of the past. It's just unconditional love. You yeah, know? exactly. And that's what I mean. It brings you present because right. they're like right now, right now, right now, right now. And right. you're like, damn, like what's up little homie? What the fuck do you want? He wakes me up every morning like, "Mm." yeah, (laughs) like to take him out. Like, no, tell me five more minutes, five more minutes. He's like, "Mm." I'm like, God, why do I have to train you? He's tiny too, huh? Yeah. I'm like, just what is he, a Yorkie? Just go shit somewhere. I don't know. (laughs) Like, like, I went out last night, Toby. Mama's hung over. Just take a shit in the corner. I'll forget. Just go take a shit. Like, I'll clean it up later. (laughs) I got Febreze. It's all good. (laughs) No, but, um, He's he's good. I I'm, I'm glad he gets me up, you know, because I'll put, I'll leave my phone at home. I'll go for a walk and yeah. I'll just meditate on this little ten minute walk three times a day, resets myself. Yeah, yeah. No, and I see it too. I, I like it kind of like, it's really strange. Like, I always say when I'm like, you know how could we we all kind of go out and it's kind of a lonely thing. Like just being an artist is kind of like a thing. You're off on your own. A lot of us are the ones that are like trying to work and create quality content are. Because otherwise you're you're running away from that solitude from that real art. That's where you really get to discover like your art, you know. Right. And and when you go out and everybody goes off and does their own thing, you know, you'll have like I was just at a party this last Saturday and I met up with a bunch of people. They're all you know people like Renee Rosado and all these different people, and you you can see where people are like spiritually because it affects them mentally and because of emotionally and everything and you're just like oh shit like oh, okay i see what the fuck you're doing like it's almost like you see a little more of people's light if right. they've been doing their work and then you also see where people are like they need a little more work you know that are like you know you and then that, that's the kind of person that you might need to be like hey let me fucking adjust your little perspective here because that's all it is it's a perspective right and uh and yeah and i see it in you too that she's like you're like i'm in yoga in this motherfucker i'm doing my thing i'm meditating i'm figuring it out <laughs> Yeah, because, I mean, it's true, like, you know, growing up in a certain environment, right, if you already have social limitations, right, Mm. you have gender limitations, you have racial limitations, you have, like, um, situational limitations, you know, like, for example, like myself, like, you know, one of my sociology teachers once told me, she's like, oh, because you grew up with a single mom. And you're Hispanic, you're Latina, you're most likely you're uh, you're going to end up pregnant by the time you're 16. I'm like, damn, bitch. Bitch, how'd you know? I was yeah. like, no, I was like, I'm late. I just told my boyfriend to get me pregnant last week. <laughs> I was like, no, I've been told him I want a baby. I was like, damn, I, I tried to. <laughs> I was like, I probably shouldn't have said that. I'm falling to statistics. Uh, but no, it's true. You know, it's like if you can, if you can surpass all that, right? If you can get out of your head, and and then it, especially like Latinos too, we're not used to seeing ourselves in. And, and uh, the predominant lead roles, you know, mm-hmm. and just until now, more recently, there's a lot more uh, Latinos coming up in le- leading roles. But when you grow up like that, you don't you think to yourself, oh, I guess 
I'm not that important. You know, yeah. I, it's like my story isn't that significant. My story is not that important, but it, it's you have to overcome all these things and know that we're just your life is just as important as mine, yeah. right? My life is just, our lives are just as important as anybody else, as Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, yeah. right? It's just, we have different challenges as human beings and souls to overcome. I feel like we picked them too, in a lot of ways. What? I feel like we kind of picked, this is just me being a crazy hippie and doing a lot of different uh, <laughs> plant medicines, uh, aka cool. drugs. Um, I, I feel like we kind of pick our, our starting point. Like, we kind of pick where we're going to be the kind of parent. Like, we kind of, like, you know, in our great beyond, before we're born, we kind of oh, pick, like... Oh, yeah, for like, sure. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to... It's a mission. Yeah, you exactly. Know? And like, you assign yourself gonna the mission. What's going to be your mission? Oh, I'm going to be this girl that looks like this, and she's going to be born here, and she's going to have these challenges There's of being different levels, raised right? by There's expert this level. mom, and then she's not going to know her dad for a while, and yeah. it's like, the hell is going to mess you up a little bit more. Or even, you know? I mean, who knows how, how, who knows how, you just kind of... You know, you kind of pick, you know, parameters of like, okay, female, all right. I wanna, I wanna be able to overcome the challenge of like people just perceiving me for my looks, or people just perceiving me as a woman, or you know what I mean, like. Right. And then I'm sure there, there's like, if you look at it like a video game, there's like expert level too. It's like I want to be a slave in a Chinese sweat factory, right? right? No, totally. See if I can pass that level. Or you know? I want to see. If, uh, or or even or even been like, because I feel like the the, the best. I want the, like throw that challenge at me and throw that challenge exactly, at me. Yeah. Like, I, I got this. Watch, but watch. I'm gonna make the it. Game, right. That's why you play yeah. the game to get that high to beat it. Yeah. You know? But then, I feel like also growing up with having everything is also a big challenge. They, they have that thing called affluence, right? Right. Where where kids that grow up with everything, with all the money, with every like you know no problems, they don't know how to live real life. Right. Because they've never there's, had to deal with no obstacles route. and they, right. don't, they don't know how to get over things because everything's been handed. Right. So they, 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 it's a lack for them. Mm-hmm. It, in a, in a, you know, it's just a, pick your battle. And even then, like I've had my, my because my mom was uh, a single mom, she gave me a lot and she mm. always wants to do stuff for me, mm. you know, and I would tell her, I was like, mom, chill. Yeah. I need to learn how to do certain things for myself. You know, I get that you want to help me. You're used to being like mom. You're yeah. always used to being mom and dad, being able to provide for both. Um but you don't have to anymore yeah. you know you have my my dad which is my stepdad you know helping you out or um or just me you know yeah. i'm i'm grown i should be able to do it my my brother can do it himself too like i i love you but at some point like there's some things that we need to learn how to do on our own and not be so dependent on our parents but she was probably doing it you know of course she was doing it out of the kindness of her heart but i think there's even deeper reason she was probably doing it right and then implanting that same characteristic into you where oh, you totally go doesn't. where you go overboard you know what i mean i for do other it all people. the time that's what i'm saying i did, so, it, to my, I saw it, did it to my brother and, and i realized and it's a good trait to have and i was like god look what my mom did to me she messed me up <laughs> you know? she spent all my money on this kid <laughs> but it's a good trait to pass down because it means you guys are giving people when you want you right. know and i'm but the at same some way point, too if we give too much we can disable people so so not it's it's just about learning how to navigate the people to give right. to because right. i'm the same way i give but too we much give and you have to know when is it's taking too much from you. Yeah. Right. That yeah. you're not you're not protecting your boundaries. You're not self loving you. Yeah. You're just giving way too much yep. of you because you have to love yourself first. You're giving that person you all your to, life. Yeah. You yeah. can't do that. You have to protect yours. And then, you know, once you you know once you know you're good, you can if they need a little bit of help or whatever, just. I help think them I out. think just doing something for someone doesn't isn't always the best thing. I think you know it's always about teaching people how to. Or maybe even just being like, this is what helped me. That's, you know, whatever. But if when you do, there's no shortcuts. Mm-hmm. You can't do the work for somebody. You can't be like, hey, I'm going to do this for you. Like, people are going to have to do their own work right. whatever, in because whatever form that comes. Because those are people's personal challenges and exactly. lessons in life. Yep. And you're taking away from their learning. Because you're, and you think you're helping, right? You're right. doing it for them. You're like, right. but I'll you're, do it no, for you. You're but taking from them. You know, and that's why I'm saying, that's why I think. And that could happen in relationships oh, too. It hap- you know? It's happened to me. That's been my biggest thing. Yeah. Well, I, I overextend. And and I forget about myself. Right. So so I I start to give and I make this person my purpose, and and it's and you know that's been my biggest thing like learning. And then they come back and say like, oh, what happened? I thought you were such a nice person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I thought you were gonna continue to give. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it makes not, you feel like, guilty about yeah, it. Yeah, they try to like, make you feel guilty, but that's when you know that that person was too dependent on you. Yeah. You know that that person. And it's, it's and like, it, you kind of fucked them too because you were you know yeah, and you're enabling like, right, and it's like then that's when you cross you stop it and you say hey but this is how it makes me feel like yeah. i know you feel like that but now i'm i'm feeling like this yeah. and it's about communication yeah. it's like and then that that way they can realize like yo 
you're taking too much and you're affecting people like to a point that you're hurting people. Yeah. I get that you're hurting, but in you hurt, trying to like replenish your pain, you're taking. So and you're, what you're, you, you're perpetuating what, that hurt. What, what do you do when, when you can't look around, yeah. right? You, you, nothing, no one's there to help you out. You look up. Right, you mm. look up. What is there? Hey, can, I need help. Yeah. Right, no one is around me to help me. What do I do? And, it, it, and you have your own answers. It's almost like you know, talking to God is kind of talking to yourself, right? Because right? we are you our look all inside. God. You can look inside. You can look above. Yeah. You can look to the devil if you want. Yeah, <laughs> like, wherever the fuck you need up, guidance from. Nobody's helping me. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> don't do the black <laughs> magic, <laughs> this, guys. Like, but there is. I, you know, there is. I that, read this like line in a script recently, and it was like. Black magic is um, really bad because it puts the needs and desires of one person above what's good f uh, for for us all in nature, mm. right? It doesn't give anything bad. It's just like just trying takes. to take, take, take. Like, what do you want? What do I want? I want this person. Okay, I'm gonna, let's make, do black magic and make that person yours. Uh, but as opposed to like, what is your lesson that you're supposed to learn from not uh, having that person? You know, you're or, trying to cheat the game. Right. Or maybe you want to get away from that one person, you know, like on, on your character on Isos High and yeah. that girl. Oh, that's uh, true. That's funny. Tiffany, she went to the black, the, the bruja and she was like, please make it go away. Yeah. But like, what's your lesson and not making it go away you I never even thought about that yeah so there's a lesson of of falling in love with someone that isn't meant for you right yeah. so she needed to experience that pain yeah. to know of that gonorrhea <laughs> that pain but that you know it, that's not yours what's not yours is not yours mm -hmm. you know what i mean and that's okay you need to have faith that somebody that god the universe is gonna ha bring you what you want yeah. in the right way to where it doesn't hurt anyone else so that's the thing you give right and you do things you can want things but if with the things that you want and you desire they're going to hurt someone else mm. then that's not in alignment with with, exactly. with the positivity of the universe of god whatever you want to call it and it's right? it all has its that's way that's how you know like what should i want you know should i want this or should i not is it going to affect people is it going to affect you in a positive way yeah. then it's then it's for you if it's going to hurt somebody else then it's not for you and you need to understand we need to understand that the the ego is 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 the thing that wants to control things right the ego Damn, is, i should get like an oprah show right that's, that's why i wanted to get your ass on but it's like but it's all you i know, read a lot the, the like ego. i read like four Mira. books like four or five four, books a month four no you don't yeah, four or five do. books a month yeah I, and then I, I listen to all kinds of like spirituality and like all kinds of ted talks you know all that like, shit i this is this is what you do when you're single <laughs> you don't word, have kids word right yeah. you just like you have a puppy and you, you read have books. a puppy yeah that's all you do it's like you work on you and you read all this knowledge and then i go and share with all my friends and they're like vanessa you like read too much i'm like what else am i gonna do yeah. i don't have i don't have butts to wipe <laughs> yeah which is good which is a good which thing okay, because, you know? because you're adding <laughs> to the world i also feel like i was talking to i was talking to uh you know ugo and sophia right which mm -hmm. i'm gonna have on here uh they just had a baby and this beautiful little child phoenix and and i just i i i'm a believer that you pass on not only the knowledge but like the life lessons you've gotten when you give birth to a child when you guys conceive mm -hmm. like that's the starting point all the lessons you've learned all the hurdles where it comes to like your mental work spiritual work everything you, whether it be like I can't control my finances or I can't control my weight or whatever that may be, whatever problems you're still battling, you're gonna pass on to that child. Because right. like for example, like they, they've genetically proven it with with obese people, right? When they when they they did the um, they they examined the semen of, a, of an obese man and and the baby would have been you know like 300 times more likely to be obese. And when that man that same man lost the weight. And then they examined the semen again. That variant was not in there anymore. So that mm. baby's not more like more, more, you know, three hundred times likely to be obese or whatever. Right, right. And I just feel like that. There's so much in our DNA that I think it's I like everything. A, the, the emotional intelligence, right? Exactly. And I and, and I feel like that shit you pass on. So wherever I, that people are like, why are you waiting so long? I'm like, bitch, I'm only twenty nine. But you know, like, <laughs> right. You know, but it's just being Latino. You fall. You you people want you to fall into these stereotypes and have your right. kids in your twenties. And I'm like, why the fuck is the rush? And I'm like, I want to like really be prepped. And really find a person that I really want to die, ride with because then it's not about these people. You know, now it's a, a third person that, right. you know, that you got to ride for and you got to figure it out for them. Right. And yeah, you're right. I, I feel like you do pass emotional intelligence onto people. You see it all the time. You know, the kids 
come out with the little attitudes that the parents have at the same, yep. the, you know, a little fussiness or a mm-hmm. little uh, uh, or whatever. It's yeah. all being transferred. Yeah. So you have to be really careful too when you're pregnant. Um, I always tell like my friends, I always see them there. They're really good about this too, about um, being emotionally stable. Yeah. You know, making sure that... Which is tough because your hormones are going fucking crazy, I'm right, sure. Right, they are. But sometimes, like one of my friends, um, she was pregnant recently and her grandma passed away in the midst of it, you know? And That's it was tough. finding this balance of like not crying so much, but crying enough to let it out, you know, to teach your child essentially that yeah. you shouldn't hold things in and it's okay to to cry and to process yeah. things but you need to because if not need to. they're gonna have to do the processing right for you. exactly if yeah. the baby will come out with like wanting to cry yeah you know but i think my friend did a really great job at it because you know she dealt with this she cried but also at the same time it wasn't so much where she was it was you know causing depression or like draining her, yeah you know She's, yeah she had a good emotion there's process. a healthy that that's you know that's why i tell people like the ayahuasca makes you do you know i've you know that was one of our popular episodes that we were talking when i talked about ayahuasca like it makes you deal with all the demons you haven't wanted to deal with right. and not only that my first experience i was dealing with demons that my parents haven't dealt with right you know what i mean and and, I, and i'm getting like all this shit all this pain and all this hurt that i didn't even know existed in my subconscious mm-hmm. but it's all weight because you know people don't People don't process things. Uh, this is the way I say it. Like people don't process things until they're done being processed. Most people process things until they're manageable and you can store it in the back of your head until you fucking eventually forget about it and you stop thinking about it. But that has weight on you, and you have that with a bunch of different things. Like somebody fucks you over and like it hurts kind of. You're like I'm not gonna think about it. You know what? Fuck that person. I'm not thinking about it. And you kind of store that in the back of your brain, and that happens a billion fucking times throughout right. your life. And eventually, if you know, that's why life feels so heavy, and it feels like you're just dragging along. Like, whoa, everything takes well, that, so much yeah, effort and it's to like, do. And then you feel depressed. Yeah, you know, because you're stuck with all these things that right. you haven't dealt it's with, weighing you down. You it's do like work. these tears that want to come out, yeah. but you're not dealing with them. You know, and that's why when someone dies, you sometimes you see people like even on TV. You know, someone dies, you don't even know that celebrity, but everyone's like, oh. Yeah, <sighs> but it's like, it's like because it, you haven't cried in your own real you life. You haven't cried, and sometimes you need people like that that you do feel close to, or that somehow made a connection with you to help you purge. Yeah, you know. I feel so, like that's a job as artists. Like you, yeah, you. That's, you know what I mean? that's to, exactly what it is. You know, when we see people. people, we make people cry. We right? go, we go into and our own hearts. Like, so Yo, you can go I into cried. Yours. I, I, I cried thug tears whenever you you died on East Los High. Yeah. I'm like <laughs> thug tears. I, I cried too. <laughs> and you're like I cried real tears, motherfucker, real hard. <laughs> No, but you know what I mean? It's like it, no, totally people agree. relate to it on that sense and they're like, well, so you, you go into your heart, so they go into theirs. It the situation that I was in or somebody that I knew and I, you know, I, I'm still dealing with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the beautiful thing about um, being actors and telling stories like this and going there, you yeah. know, like you just, you have to, as we have to sacrifice a part of our heart, you yeah. know, and to, but that's also what heals your heart. Right. You right. know what I mean? And, and, and it might not feel comfortable but going into these depths and telling these stories is what heals the world. Like that's how you do it. As you, cause in, as you go into your heart, you heal your heart. And as right. you're going into your heart, people, your audience is going into their heart. Like the deeper you go, the deeper they're going with you. You know what right. I mean? And, and, and at the deeper you go, the deeper you heal yourself at vice versa, you know, same thing with your, with your audience. So it's, well, you know, ironically, somebody asked me recently, it's like, what was one thing that you felt like you had in common with Camila, um, on these so high. And I was like, well, a part of it is like I didn't have a good relationship with my father growing up, yeah. right? Um, but also the character itself was going through therapy, yeah. right? At such a young age. Yeah. And I was thinking to myself like, oh my God, when have I ever done that for myself? You know what I mean? Word. Well, I've never really taken the time to look deep within myself and say, hey, what are these things or that that I've gone through in my life that I need to address? I didn't even so, know what therapy was. Right, like, growing up, you're like, what? What the fuck's therapy? Like, you need to talk to somebody. What? <laughs> it's just so weird. And and then I tried to go to therapy once when I was like, um, just getting out of high school, and I I was just so rebellious. I had yeah. the same attitude. Your I was ego like, still up. Like, yeah, fuck I was like, this. what the hell am I? This person doesn't know my life. And that comes from you don't pain. know my life. Yeah, that comes from some like deep how pain. is this this white lady who had everything her whole life gonna know anything about my life? It's like Vanessa, you're triggered right it's now. Like, Vanessa- Shut up. <laughs> You shut your shut stupid up, fucking you face. Don't know my life. You like, don't shit. And Vanessa she's like, you <laughs> needs to see a psych. <laughs> yeah, for real. What? No. We need to prescribe uh, her some fucking Zoloft. No, but seriously, like, <laughs> I, I had to check myself and I was like, look, okay, let's be serious about it. What are the things that in my life that I need to address? And I started doing that. So, like, two years ago, I, 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 as soon as the show was being over, 
um, I started thinking about my own life and I, I started going through a therapist. The work. I started doing the internal work. I was yeah. like, let's go. Let's There's no go. shortcuts. There isn't. And it's just like, what do you want in life? You yeah. know, do you want to carry all that around? Yeah. Do you do you want to like... And it kind of makes sense in like what you've, you're able to accomplish right. as you shed this shit away. You and know then what we mean? keep re repeating the same patterns and the people mm -hmm. that we attract, the people that we date, yeah. the jobs that we have. Yeah, because right? of those traumas. Because, because of those traumas, traumas and, and your sense of self-worth and what you deserve because of the amount of love that you have. If yeah. you feel like, oh, well, I'm not... Like, I, I'm cool, right? I'm awesome. Yeah, I'm talented. But I've had all these things happen in my life. If I was really worth something, they probably wouldn't have happened to me, mm -hmm. right? So you mm -hmm. start thinking to yourself, like, what is my self-worth? Yeah. You know, is my self-worth really what I've been, these lies I've been telling myself because of situations I've been through? Or is it because I haven't learned the lesson of those situations exactly. that can make me stronger and smarter and wiser and made yeah. me feel like, no, actually, I do deserve this because I'm that much better now because I went through that and I have this knowledge that other people don't. So yeah. I do deserve to have all these things. Because like, you said it's like a video game yeah. right i passed that fucking level yeah right exactly. or you could be stuck on that level for your whole life and that's the big thing that we our ego doesn't allow us to see that right we keep be bashing our head right or if it's dating a specific type of person or if it's like for me at one point in my life i was getting pulled over a lot mm -hmm. i was i was having problems with the fucking law like a mother did you figure out what that was it was just me being a rebellious fuck and being like, fuck the police and the attitude <laughs> attitude i had towards police because i was right. just young and i had money and i had a nice car and I was just being a little douchebag, you know what I mean? And having my outlook wasn't right. It, it was just yeah, like... Yeah, you didn't have a sense of like so, good self-worth and like... It was more of like I was still fucking trying to be the dope man I grew up watching, you know what I mean? Like in the hood, like the nice car and right. like, you know, tinted windows and all this shit. I was a magnet for police. So I was just getting... And, and, and it was, I was driving fast and I was driving reckless and I had crashed and all this crazy shit. I just needed to fucking calm myself down and stop you being attention. You needed to prove that you were better than that. Yeah, exactly, right? exactly. And I remember, and even cops would pull me over, like, like, oh, it's a nice car, and it would just kind of be like, you know, just kind of smug Did about you steal it. it? <laughs> exactly, that kind of like, oh, like, you know, what do you do? Like, and I'm just like, right. get my fucking ticket, asshole. You know, and that's the right. kind of attitude I had, and I was meeting it with that same type of resistance instead of just being like, you know what? Me too. It's, Fuck it. Anytime I had some confront me, I had this thing with authority, and that mm. usually comes from having daddy issues. Mm. You know, when you have or mommy issues, yeah. one of the one of them. Yeah. Um, and which is, can be good, yeah. right? If you learn not to trust authority then sometimes you we need people like that in society yeah. to second guess like who our leaders are that's what my like, mom was this because, doesn't yeah. seem right right mm -hmm. but because think about it if you grew up trusting everyone the whole time it's like oh i always You're trust my mommy line. my daddy this this person's got to be good it's like mm -hmm. no um so that's the plus side of of having issues with authority it can serve but, you right it can serve you but it can damage you too but um right so you have to be careful of like knowing how far to go and how much is personal to you yeah right at some point we have to take just the treasures of all the crap and then just put the pebbles down you know get those yeah. little precious stones and then throw away the little pebbles and that's that you how you don't pass need. that level right you know, that's how you pass that level learning to fucking adapt the things that you get from that level right and then letting go of the pieces that come the right. fucked up pieces that come it's with like, it it's like we don't need that i have all these beautiful yeah. things that i got from that um which teaches me all these beautiful things in life and it's going to help me and help me help a lot of other the people the greater good yeah right it's very strange you know it's, it's funny because I, I do get that from my mom my mom used to well i always tell a story that she used to, we used to have one of them fucking like big ass vhs you know those cameras those like big ass cameras from the 80s and she used to record me and she used to give me like scenarios this is like during the 1992 riots in la like mm. where the city was burning down it's kind of crazy and and she, and i would just turn into a little fucking politician i'd put a little little ruler under my arm a little fucking notebook and she'd be like what should the people do and i'm like the people should unite together and stop burning our own neighborhoods i'm just i would just ramble and she'd be like uh-huh what else And she'd be taping me and and it came because they were refugees from el salvador she had her family had money they you know and then they found out and they came and they tortured her family and killed oh, them oh really yeah tortured murdered my grandpa my two uncles my aunt oh my god and they stole all you their. Should make a movie about it. I know. Yeah, I have. I have. I haven't finished. I have so much. You need a producer. I, I do. <laughs> I do. Help me. Uh, I have a few. And then, and then my dad, same thing. Like he was going to the schools, and he had to jump off a cliff because they were shooting through the fucking mountains. It's kind of crazy. So they both, you know, it, it all. It all kind of comes full circle. It's like it's very strange that you because of their paranoia from their government or whatever they put that in you, and I have that's where I get it from. Where I'm like. 
I don't know, man. I think this is bullshit. Like, I'm super conspiracy. Right, like, right. Uh, I never trust anything. I'm never trusting right. anyone. I'm yeah, like, that, the, the issues with authority can, can be a taught thing. And I feel like even, be, even with, like, from different places. Even with, yeah. like, even with, like, child molesters, right. my mom was so, like, instilled that in us so much of, like, these motherfuckers are trying to get you, all right? You tell me anything. I'm like, uh, uh My mom was the same way. She's like, si right. alguien te toca así, <laughs> tú me dices, yeah. tú le dices a alguien. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> all like, right, mom. Like, uh, I don't think anyone's going to touch me there, but thanks no i was a, i was a cute little girl yeah <laughs> but, but i, I, I did have little boys that would try to like I didn't understand. touch me at like nine years old yeah that's kind of crazy believe that? that's what i'm saying my little Hashtag boy tried to too. rape me at nine years old i was like bro hey bro you don't even know what that thing is you probably think it's like an extra finger <laughs> i gotta like, use it it is an extra finger what are you talking about hey i gotta use the restroom okay well we'll, we'll use the restroom and then we'll jump into some <laughs> hot seat questions it's right after all right let's take a okay. pause all right, we're back with Vanessa Vasquez we're after back? a pee break. Right. Yeah. Hold All right, listen. I know you don't eat meat anymore. Wait, hold on. Let me post this. We're going to fire off some rounds right now. We're going to do a podcast with Rick Mencia. What's the, uh, see, the radio? At, at the Curious Radio. I, I have such a stoner guys. laugh. Hey guys, are you recording this? Up? We yeah. are here at Curious Radio. Yo. We're going to do a podcast. I sound like Rick a dork, Mencia. guys. If you guys are seeing that video. It's a good time to plug your social. What is it? Which one? What's your social? I'm going to put it in the video, oh, but... Uh, Vanesita V. Vanesita with two ends. <coughs> two ends. Two ends. You said three ends? No, I said two. And uh, is there an underscore or some crazy shit? No, just Vanesita. Vanesita, Vanesita v. v. Two ends. Two S's. Two S's, bitch. All right, Vanessa. I know you don't eat meat anymore, but when you did, mm-hmm. Whataburger or In-N-Out? Whataburger. What? I know. Diarrea, way. It's a uh, culture. It's what's a culture. what's one thing on your bucket list? Go. First thing that comes to your head. <sighs> I, I was thinking producing, but I'm already doing that. Okay, give me another one. Um, Mansion in Malibu. <laughs> Boom. One thing on your bucket list is to have a mansion in Malibu. What's the ugliest animal you can think of? Go. Hyena. <laughs> what's, what's your favorite childhood cartoon? Uh, <laughs> Doug. <laughs> Doug, give me the first th- f- first word that pops into your head when I say- when I tell you this. All right, first word, food, hot dog, fashion, dress, band, uh, Motley Crue, <laughs> color, blue, city, Los Angeles. Bam! All right, you didn't do horrible, but now we're gonna go into some current events. I don't even even listen to Motley Crue. <laughs> I know that's what I was like. What? I was what like, this it? doesn't explain much. I think I just much. recently saw it. All right, boom. Let's go into some current events. I'm sure you've heard of this man who says he destroyed Trump. <laughs> Trump walk. Uh, the Trump star on the Walk of Fame is booked on felony vandalism. I don't know. How do you feel about this? Like they keep destroying his star. I have I have a different opinion than most Ooh. people because that thing is insured also. Oh, you know what I mean? It? Yeah, of course it's insured. Oh, what's the problem? No, I'm, just no, I'm just saying it was still vandalism. No, yeah, it's vandalism. But, I mean, somebody's got to fix it. It's not like Donald Trump is going over there. And that's what that. I'm saying. Like you're destroying your own fucking streets, and and you're you know expecting someone else like to give a fuck. I mean, but if anything, a, you're proving his case. You're making you're you're making yourself look like the person they're describing. Yeah, but I think the way people see it is that he's causing so much pain and so much destruction that. It, in real lives that what's the destruction on a star really mean of course but i just feel like we shouldn't fall into the stereotypes they're putting on us you know what i mean all we're doing is we're making the 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 message that they're pushing more true see this motherfucker standing on front now with the trump 2020 sign i'm sure you saw that picture right right yeah there's definitely this uh, i'm saying like you, 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 like, you. like Martin Luther King, right? He was such he was such an advocate of like being respectful and doing the, the right silent thing. protests and being yeah, doing the right thing. And that's how um you uh So you change the narrative about you, about your people, about everything. It takes but that's time. how you, you, and you do what they don't expect you to do. Exactly. You know what I mean? You sh- they that- want you to do all mm-hmm. that stuff. They want you to be like that. And that's what I, I tell people a lot too. It's like, for example, like something came up, you know, recently and people, everyone's so mad. We get into this hate, yeah. right? Because it's easy. 
it's easy to fall into hate that's but, powerless though but it is and you're being ju- we're being just like them exactly right powerless. when i find myself when i used to go back home a lot um because i live in california now and i'm texas very conservative i used to have conservatives that would attack me just from be- being from california yeah and they would say well why does california think like this this and that and it's like and they'd get so mad to where they started offending me personally and i was like okay there's a um, deeper issue here right like what's going on and and then i would get up you know frustrated and i start feeling like oh my god i hate this person but i had to take a step back and i was like okay i don't hate this person and i'm not gonna stoop to their level because Mm. it's contaminating my spirit it's it's my energy and no matter what you say to those people like it's not gonna it's not gonna do anything right they've made up their mind right the only way we really have power is the people that we elect and that, that and our dollars right our dollars and our are work, our biggest right and and how I just, that's affected i just think like the people want change right we, we all, of course we all want change but change is slow it's always been slow and we're always going to want it to be faster than it actually is but i think the biggest way to make a change is in our dollar right nobody gives a fuck until you start affecting their income right you know right. what I mean? And, and that goes down. To, but the problem like is the that products that we buy. things and stuff Exactly. Like that that yeah. comes down to doing your due diligence. And that's that's the part that people don't want to do. It's easy to talk shit and it's easy to hate. But it's hard to be like, OK, which brands am I buying from that are, you know, endorsed by such and such or giving this politician money or is given, you know, which mm-hmm. what, what are my what are my where's what my money I going? To? Because these corporations also fund these people, these banks. Who are you banking with? Do you have a credit union? Do you have a massive right. bank that are pushing, you know, they're funding things that you don't want? You know, like, you know, I had Bank of America before and I got rid of them. Um, they were they were one of the big funders in the Dakota Access Pipeline. And it's like, that's how you hit them where it hurts. You know what right. I mean? Same thing even with like Uber when people uninstalled shit. shit that's how you make change. You, effect, you hit them in the pocket. Right. Because that's power. That's where right. we got our power. You know? Um, let's go on to a lighter one. Uh, lighter this, one. This, one, this one's pretty funny. I don't know if you've seen this video, but shit be popping off at McDonald's in the... In the fucking Las oh Vegas area. Oh my god! Area. Is that the uh, the clerk that body slammed somebody for oh my god. the soda at McDonald's for stealing yeah, so soda? Check it out. <laughs> check this shit out. All right. Ooh. Oh, she hit her in the face with a tray. Ooh. Oh shit! Her titty came out. Jesus Christ! They're oh taking god, out chairs. She's hammering her. Oh my god. It intense. seems like they had some sort of personal. Look, no, she starts beating her up too, cause she's hitting her. Then she's getting jumped by two bitches. Look at her. Oh my god. She's talking. Apparently, she offended her mama. Oh, I thought it was because she stole soda. She was, but she was just talking shit. That girl got beat up. Damn. And then they go back and follow. She follows her. Things got a little out of hand. It starts over again. Things got a little out of hand. At this McDonald's. <laughs> Somebody wrote, try to grab a free soda and got hit with a free 30 piece McNugget combo with no <laughs> sauce instead. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny comment. <laughs> what does that say? OG Bobby. It Pete feels like they knew each underscore. other before, right? Like maybe I don't know, but they fucked each before. other up. I'll tell you that much. I don't know. That's kind of nuts. Boom. All right. That's all we got for current events. We're going to finish off on that. <laughs> Vanessa, what's your message? What do you want to leave people off with? What's your message? What do you want to tell the people to take away from this? Episode 64. Mm, let's see. Hashtag you're welcome. It's hot as a bitch in the studio. <laughs> I want to leave with... Uh, You know, just to take care of yourself first and your own spirit and your own mind and to put yourself first. You know, if something is affecting you or somebody's affecting you, um, just make sure you're you're doing what's best for you. You're taking care of yourself first, because if you don't have yourself, you know, if you don't have your your mind and your spirit intact, then how can you really help others? Right. So always make sure that you're in alignment with the good of, you know, society um, and that's it. Put you and love yourself first. Boom. Dropping fire on you mofos. This one <laughs> this one was a long time coming. Uh, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. I want to have you back on whenever the fuck you want. Okay. This is great. Uh, <laughs> all right, guys. We'll be back next week. Episode 64. Later. Later.